Well, I just want to say a word about the um, theoretical density. So where does this theoretical density equation come from and how does that compare to experimental densities? So in your text you'll find an equation for the theoretical density. Okay, well, where does this come from? This is really just a unit conversion. So if you think about um, density, which is going to be some kind of a quantity over a volume, okay, unless we're talking about linear densities or planar densities, which are quantity per length or quantity per area. Here we've got a quantity per volume. Right? And we normally think of um, something like grams per centimeter cubed as our density that we can look up in the textbook. But we could also have a density just simply the number of atoms, say, per volume. That's a density quantity, right? We got a, a total number of atoms per, per volume. So that's really kind of where we start. And so in this equation here, n is just the number of atoms in the unit cell. Right? That takes into account one-eighth for the corners, one-half for the faces, and then anything inside of the cell would be counted as one. And so you'll, you'll recall, hopefully, that the body centered cubic n is equal to 2. And for the face centered cubic, if we count those, we'll get n is equal to 4. Okay, so that's the number of atoms per unit cell. And then all we need is the volume of the unit cell, which we know in the cubic system then is just that edge length lattice parameter A cubed. So that'll give us atoms per volume. Now, if we want to convert that into a grams per centimeter cubed term, then what we need to do is take the atomic weight, which is written in grams per mole, okay? but we know atoms, so let's rewrite grams per mole in terms of grams per atom, and then we can just multiply. So we'll use Avogadro's number of atoms in a mole. That converts to grams per atom. Right. So now I know the number of atoms per volume. I know how many grams per atom. So if I just go ahead and multiply those, I'll get my grams per volume, which is the density that I'm used to looking up. And so that's, that's all the theoretical density is. So the theoretical density uh, does assume that these, the crystal structures that we're using, right, that assume that we're dealing with atoms as spheres, uh, hard spheres. And that actually works very well in most cases. But there are times when the atoms don't behave exactly like hard spheres. And in the HCP system, the hexagonal close pack system, we often will see that. That the, um, the stretch in the C direction many times is not as large as it should be, well, theoretically. Experimentally, it's smaller. And that's because in that C direction, instead of the atoms acting as spheres, they get squashed, so they're more like ellipsoids. And so that C dimension is a little bit smaller than what is expected theoretically. And so the densities then therefore be greater experimentally in some of those cases. It's not hugely greater, it's just a small, a small change. But you will see that, and I think you have a, a question um, perhaps in your homework on that, um, but I know that it's, it's in your reading. Okay.